So at least that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we did Supta Bhadra Konasana to start off. Now I want to do Supta Parangustasana. So, um, and uh, so we'll lie down, have your belt if you have one, and extend your legs out in Supta Tadasana. I know that in the front view, my legs are kind of disappeared, but uh, it'll be okay once we, once we move into the pose. Okay, so take your belt around the ball of the right foot and extend that right leg up to the ceiling, that right foot up to the ceiling. Have your elbows on the floor, both legs straight, and draw that right heel toward your head just to the point where you begin to feel the resistance in the back of the thigh. It's really nice to do this kind of um, stretching of the hamstring because with the low back fully supported on the floor, it's darn near impossible to hurt your back. And yet you get the benefit of the full extension through the back of the leg. So for people who have back concerns, this is really an excellent way to get some extension through the hamstrings. And of course, when you have back problems, the hamstrings tend to tighten up in conjunction with the uh, sort of a protection of the low back. So this is a very good way to work with that. Okay, and so now take the left hand out to the left side and take the right foot over to the right side. Don't worry about going with, all, with that foot all the way to the floor. Just support it a little bit above the floor, not wanting to get too much going here with this inner uh, groin tendon. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll be, we'll be getting quite a bit of extension through there. But for the moment, just a really a warm up in Padangustasana 2. Supta Padangustasana 2. Supine, extend out to the big, big toe or foot focus. And then back up the center and switch legs. Take the belt to the left foot. And extend that left foot up to the ceiling. Same thing, both legs extended straight, elbows on the floor, holding the straps. As you extend that left heel up to the ceiling, extend the left sit bone into the toward the floor. Keep the kneecap firm into the thigh and bring that left heel toward your head just to the point where you start to feel that resistance in the hamstring. Maybe some will feel it in the calf. Most of you feel it here in the hamstring. Just go to that point of resistance and just hold there. Then we reach up the strap, hold on with one hand to both straps, keep the left shoulder blade and right shoulder blade on the floor, and bring that left foot over to the left side. Keep the right side of the sacrum down as best you can. Again, go easy here on this, this big uh, tendon here, the inner thigh. Don't overstretch it. Just using this as a bit of a warm up. And then back up to center. Let's go back to the first leg. Same pose, set of poses. Bring that right heel up. This time, maybe a little more of a pull of that heel toward the face, keeping both legs straight, both kneecaps firm into the thighs. And again, reach up the belt, strap, 
and take that right foot over to the right side, keeping the left thigh and left sacrum down as best you can. It's hard not to puff up a little bit here or to keep that down. And then back up to center. And again, switch to the left foot. Bring that left heel up. Both legs straight, both kneecaps firm into the thighs. Draw that heel toward your head so you feel a little, little testing here in that back of that hamstring, back of that thigh. And then holding the straps with your left hand, bring that left foot over to the left side. And then back up to center and release. Just rest there for a few breaths. Let your feet and legs roll out to the sides and be at ease for a few breaths. All right, and then come up again to a seated posture. It's good if you can <clears throat> to sit on a little bit of a height. And again, have your belt handy. You may wish to use. We'll do a seated forward bend, Hashimoto So if you're using a belt, you put it around the balls of your feet. Use the strap. You can see my elbows are bent and lifting. We don't want to kind of get into a crouch kind of position. We want to really think about lifting and opening through the whole sequence. So this is Dandasana, where your body is basically in a 90 degree angle. You're extending your heels away, kneecaps firm into the thighs, back of the knees and thighs into the floor. Now we'll inhale. With the exhale, come forward just halfway, just whatever halfway is for you, just come forward a bit. But again, work to really keep that extension through the low back and the front torso. Don't round yourself down, really extend as best you can. And then inhale and come back up. <clears throat> again, using the belt, if, you're happy, if you have it in hand, to help you get that nice upright posture. And then we'll go again, seated forward bend, Hashimoto inhale, exhale, go forward to that first position. Focus here for a, a bit on lengthening the navel and sternum out over the legs, really making the low back a little bit concave as you fully extend. And then take another inhale, and with the exhale, extend out and fold into the full forward bend. Let the head and neck release. Find that breath in and out the nose as best you can. And then inhale and come up. And then we'll go to Janu Shashasan, head to knee pose. Bring the right foot up against the left side. Again, you can use the belt if you wish or not. But if you are, you use it again as kind of leverage to help you really lift and open the chest. Then inhale, and with the exhale, come forward to that halfway point. 
Again, as before, lengthen the navel and sternum out over that left leg, arching the low back. Take a few breaths. And then with an exhale, extend out and fold again into the full forward bend. Head to knee pose, Janu Shushasana. Then inhaling, ease your way back up. Again to Dandasan. Bring the left foot against the right inner thigh. Again, if you're using the belt, take it around now the right foot. Extend that right heel. Use the leverage of your hands on the belt to lift and open the chest. Keep that firm into the thigh. Inhale, exhale, come forward to that first position. Take a few breaths so you can focus on really getting the length in the navel and sternum and that arch in the low back. And then when you're ready, inhale. And then with the exhale, extend out and down into the full forward bend, head to knee pose. And then inhaling, come back up, back to staff pose, Dandasana. And we'll go one more time to each side. Right foot against left thigh. Use the belt or not. In either case, lift and open the chest. Inhale, exhale, come forward to that first position. Get that length in the navel and sternum, the arch in the low back. Then with an exhale, Extend and fold into the full forward bend. Keep that left kneecap firm into the side. Keep that back of the left knee and side moving into the floor. And then inhale and come up. Dandasana, left foot against the right thigh. This time I'm gonna go without the belt. By using the belt or bringing your arms up, inhale. Exhale, come to your first position. Look forward, arch the low back, extend the navel and sternum forward. Inhale again, and then exhale, extend and fold into the full Janu Shushasana. And again, inhaling, come back up. Back to Dandasana, staff pose. And then wide angle pose, Upavishta Konasana. So legs wide apart. Stay within yourself. Don't overstretch through the groin here, but get a good extension to, right to the edge of your comfort zone. Tighten the kneecaps into the thighs so the quadriceps are firm. The kneecaps are pointing straight up, the toes are pointing straight up. Hands on the floor to help you get that lift, that arch in the low back. Inhale, bring your arms up if you like. Exhale, come forward, rotating through the hips. Stay within yourself, don't overdo. I feel the tension already in that 
at 10, and so I'm not going any further than this. Do keep the kneecaps firm into the thighs. If you keep the quadriceps engaged and you keep the heels extending, there's less likelihood of any uh, unpleasant stress in the inner thigh and groin. If you get comfortable with it, you can bring your hands further forward, but again, no need to go any further than you're comfortable. And then ease your way up, bring the feet back together, Bharatanasana, interlace the fingers under the feet, use this as leverage to lift and open the chest. And again then, with an exhale, rotate through the hips, bringing the navel toward the feet. Let the head and neck release. Inhaling, come up. And once more, Upavista Konasana, wide angle pose, separate the feet widely. Kneecaps firm into the thighs. Thighs, back of the knees, move down. Toes and kneecaps point straight up. Hands on the floor to help you get that lift and the openness in the chest. And again, inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, this time reach out to either your legs or your big toes. And with an exhale, you rotate through the hips again. Let the head and neck release. Don't go any further than you're comfortable with. Stay within your comfort zone here. And then inhale and ease your way back up. Bring the soles of the feet together. One more time here with Bhagavanasa. Interlacing the fingers under the feet. Lift, open the chest. Inhale, exhale, rotate forward, bringing your navel toward your feet. Head and neck release. And inhale, come up, extend the legs forward in Dandasana, staff pose. And one more time, we'll do a seated forward bend, Paschimottanasana. Again, you can use the belt or not. I'm going to forego the belt for this version. Kneecaps firm into the thighs, heels extending forward, sit bones moving back, back of the knees and thighs into the floor, torso lifting, chest open, bring the arms up or use the belt. Inhale. Exhale, come forward, take hold of something, feet, legs, or belt, inhale, and then exhale, full forward bend. Paschimottanasana. And then inhale and come up. All right. So now we'll uh, lie down, face down. And uh, for comfort, I'm going to open up a blanket. We'll do a couple of uh, poses, lying down, bow pose, and bhujangasana in particular. So for bow pose, or dhanurasana, Stretch out like so. <clears throat> and then we'll do this one leg at a time just so that we get the full benefit of the extension. We'll reach back and just grab your right foot or ankle. Your left hand can be wherever is comfortable, at your side, 
or position like mine is so that I can rest my forehead on it. However you wish to do, keep the left leg straight and then lift that right leg up. You want to feel that extension through the front right thigh. And release, and we'll switch. Catch the left foot or ankle with your left hand. Position your right arm where you are comfortable with it. Extend that left knee back and then lift it up. Get that extension through that left front thigh, left quadricep. And release. And now we'll grab both feet or ankles, or you can continue with just doing one at a time is fine. But if you can grab both, do both. Reach the knees back and then lift everything up with full diagnostic. And release, take a few breaths, we'll do one more time. All right, take hold of the feet or ankles, extend the knees back and lift everything up. And release. Just rest there for a few breaths. And then we'll take Cobra Pose, Bhujangasana. You take your hands back toward your, your hips. So basically, uh, you know, the, uh, the fingertips kind of align the chest level. Extend the feet back, keep the elbows tucked in at the sides, lengthen the chest forward and lift up. You can leave your elbows bent if need be, but if you can straighten your elbows, go ahead. Then rotate your upper arms out, bring the outer deltoids back, lift the chest up. Look up if you can. You don't have any neck issues. If you do have neck issues or concerns there, just look forward. And then release. Take a couple breaths. We'll do a second time. Okay, palms evenly down, extend the feet and legs back. Lengthen the chest forward with an inhale, lift up. Externally rotate the upper arms, outer shoulders back, chest lifts. And release, and again, rest here. You can cross your arms in front of you and rest your head down, or whatever position allows you to just be at ease.
All right. And we'll come up to a kneeling position. And we'll do camel pose, Ustrasa. <clears throat> So, shoulders stacked above hips, hips above knees, hands on hips, elbows reach back toward each other. So lift and open the chest. And then we'll take the hands onto the low back, fingertips pointing into the buttocks, elbows reaching again toward each other. Inhale, lift up with the chest and arch back. Looking up at the ceiling or at the wall behind you. You want to keep the hips directly over the knees. Don't lean the hips back. Try to keep the hips directly over the knees. As you know, when we do this against the wall, we try, and you can imagine you're doing this against the wall. Imagine that your thighs and your front pelvic bones are against the wall and the upper body arches away from the wall. Inhale and come up. Take a few breaths. We'll do again. Okay, same thing. Hands on the low back, fingers pointing into the buttocks, elbows reach toward each other. We're going to keep the hips directly over the knees. We're going to then inhale, lift the torso and arch the chest back. And then inhale and come back up. Sit down onto your heels for a few breaths. Just let that stress release for a bit. All right, and then we'll stand up. Actually, I think uh, before we go into the next little phase of things, let's do a, a little bit of downward facing dog just to kind of take some of the stress out of the uh, low back. So, downward dog, Adho Palms evenly on the floor, open the palms, press the palms down, arms and legs straight. Kneecaps firm into the thighs, lift the thighs back. Stand the heels toward the floor. Head and neck release. And then walk hands and feet into a standing forward bend. And then inhale and come up. All right, so now this next sequence uh, you, we normally do when we're in the studio, we do against the wall, like so. So if you have a wall, that's fine, you, you can use. If you don't have a wall, you can use a chair if you're concerned about balance. So that's what I'm gonna do just to demonstrate it. <clears throat> but no, none of this is particularly is especially required because what you can do is simply catch your leg like so and bring your arm up. So this is fine too. So with or without a prop. But I'm going to use a prop just so that everybody can see how, how it can be done. So however you're doing, with or without a wall or other prop, stand in Tadasana. Standing pose, mountain pose. A nice upright Tadasana. Then as I said, I'm gonna use the chair for balance. So my left hand will go on the chair and I'm gonna catch my right foot behind me. <clears throat> At first, I wanna bring that left heel right up to my body and then bring, then extend the knee down. The torso lifting chest open. 
Now, if you're comfortable with your balance and you're not using a chair, you can just bring your arm up. So you get a really full extension through the front body. And then back to Tadasana. Catch the left foot. Again, extend the knee down, bring the heel toward the buttock. And then as you work into the full extension, you can let the heel come away from the buttock so you can get a little movement of that knee back to keep the front pelvic bone forward. Again, if you're comfortable with the balance, go ahead and extend your right arm up. Really get a big extension, extending down and back with the left knee, up, reaching and extending through the right arm and hand. And then back to Tadasana. So now we'll go right into Natara Jasana. So just watch for a moment. I'm going to use the chair, but the, that's entirely optional. So as I said, just watch for a moment. We start the same way, get that full extension, and then rotate through that left hip. You can use a chair, you don't need to, but if you have it and you wish to use it, you, you use the chair for balance. So that's the idea. Okay. So take your Tadasan, a little ways back on your mat. Kneecaps firm into the thighs, torso lifting, chest open. We're going to catch the left foot and bring it up as before. Extend the right arm up. Get that big extension through the whole front body. And then rotating through that right hip. Lost my balance. Rotating through that right hip. Extend out if you wish to use. You can touch the wall, chair, whatever prop you may wish or not. But then again, get that full front body extension. And then inhale and come back up. Back to your Tadasan. Catch the right foot or ankle. Extend the left hand up. Inhale. Exhale. Rotate through the hip. And get that full extension. And then come back up to Tadasana. All right. We'll do a couple of standing forward bends. So take Tadasana in the center of your mat. Kneecaps firm into the thighs. The feet can be together as mine are, or if you feel more comfortable having them a little apart, that's okay. It keeps them parallel. Lift the torso, open the chest. <clears throat> Bring the arms up, inhale. And then sweep the arms out into an exhale. Take your hands either to your legs or to the floor. Look forward, arms to the low back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, come up halfway. And then inhale, come up the rest of the way. And then we'll do again. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, sweep down into a standing forward bend. Look forward, arch the low back, fully extend through the navel and sternum. Inhale, and then with an exhale, draw yourself as fully into the forward bend as you can.
and then inhale and come up. Okay, we're ready for Hanumanasan. If you're ready for Hanumanasan. So, the idea here is to take some form of prop. I have a nice fat bolster. If you have uh, uh, blankets you can use. Uh, if you don't have anything to, of this sort, I would say just watch this pose and, and do later when you've got the option of, uh, of uh, doing with a prop. So just watch and I'll show you how we'll do. So the idea is that the right leg goes forward and the left leg comes back. Now the idea is that here the left groin, I want, I want some support on that left groin thigh on the bolster. So you need enough height to get that. When I was uh, practicing this earlier, I needed two bolsters because I wasn't at all warmed up. Now I'm okay here, but just okay. So you don't want to overdo this, but this is the idea. And then if you're comfortable with it, you bring your arms up. So that's the idea. So the right leg here extends forward, the left leg extends back. And then you carefully come out. Let me go ahead and demonstrate to the second side as well, just so that you, know, you get comfortable with the concept. So we're gonna want the hips and shoulders squared up. You don't wanna be leaning to one side or the other. And on this side here then, I want my right groin thigh supported. Like so, and then if you're comfortable with it, you can bring your arms up. So that's the idea. So go ahead and set up what you have for this. I've lost my uh, nice view of everybody. I'm gonna try. Well, I don't think I can bother. It'll just take too much time to recast. <clears throat> so I can't really see very well what you all are doing, but this is the basic structure. And we'll start with the right leg forward first. So if you're doing, you want to very carefully lower yourself onto your prop. And use your hands on your prop to help you get squared up. Because this is really the key thing, is to have good form. Have your right leg extended forward, your left leg extended back, but have your hips and shoulders squared up facing forward. So give it a try, if you wish. And if you feel pretty comfortable in it, you can bring your arms up. You have to be careful there because you'll, you'll lose some of that support, obviously. All right, and once you've completed the one side, then if you wish, you can give it a try on the second side. Left leg extends forward, right leg extends back. Use your hands on your prop to help you square up the hips and shoulders facing forward. And then if you're comfortable with it, you bring your arms up. Anamanasana, it's uh, from the story in the Ramayana where the monkey, came, monkey god, Hanuman, <clears throat> has to take one big step from Sri Lanka to the Himalayas to obtain a necessary uh, potion or something to uh, save the, the, the queen goddess. All right. Want to give it one more try to each side? Let's go ahead and take the time. Extend that right leg forward, left leg back. Square up the hips and shoulders. Bring the arms up if you wish. And then carefully to the second side. If I had my glasses on, I'd be able to see you all better. Oh yeah, that's much better. 
Same thing now, left leg forward, right leg back, right groin, thigh supported. Anamanasana. All right, I think that's good. So we'll now stretch out, we'll, we'll head towards Shavasana. But we'll do a few poses to kind of bring some release into the picture. But extend out onto the floor on your back in supine mountain pose, Supta Tadasana. So with both legs extended, Lift in your edge of the shoulder blades, take the outer deltoids down into the floor, and then hug the right knee up into your chest and extend the left heel away. And then back to Supta Tadasana, bring the left knee up into the chest, change the interlace of your fingers, draw that left knee into the chest as you extend the right heel away. Left and right sides of the sacrum stay even on the floor. Back to Supta Tadasan. One more time to each side, bring the right knee up, hug the right knee into the chest, extend the left heel away. And then one more time to the second side. Hug the left knee in, extend the right heel away. And then release that leg. And let's hug both knees into the chest just for a few more breaths. Keep the low back on the floor. It may feel good to rock from side to side a little bit. Rotate the knees around in a circle. Any of that that kind of eases out any tension in the low back, feel free to do that. When keeping the knees bent, take the feet to the floor. And just begin to ease towards Shavasana. Let the abdomen release, let the chest release. Let the head release into the floor. And then as you're ready, extend your legs out straight. Feet separated anywhere from four to eight inches or so. And then let the feet fall out to the sides. Let the legs roll out away from each other. Upper arms externally rotated, hands either on the floor, palms up, or palms down on your torso. Just let the weight of your body release into the floor. Let the breath quiet. Let 
withdraw your awareness from external sense objects. Scratch your heart. Focus your mental awareness on what you're feeling inside. You may want to focus on the sound and movement of your breath. But for now, just let go, release into your shavasana. All right, then take a few slightly deeper breaths, bring awareness back, fingers and toes. Put your eyes open. Bring your hands to your torso or abdomen. Bend your knees. Roll to your side. Take a few more breaths. And then gently push to a seated posture. And thank you for coming. Namaste.